Hungry than a fat burger, feeding off them tracks that I have to murder. Show no courtesy verbally. I look at the mic as a burner. When I murk them C's industry, figures have to merge. Them. What's a bum bum? Understand it, dudes panic where the bullet hit. The whack lyrics was targeted. Beats produced by C with standard procedure is poison these fetuses, make it hot and feverish. Who started this ish? Y'all feeling to sleep and knock a lifted market in that garbage mixed with sodium bicarbonates. I'm the pharmacist with the recipe, dumping chunks of funkadelic on the parliament. Paper chasing me now, that's a funky following. Spitting iron bars, you keep swallowing. No tolerance for the bull ish, man. I'm what the problem is. Victims be tripping like acid when I'm blotting them, swatting them like flies and put shots and them stick a needle in their arm just to prove a point. I'm the apocalypse. We have Dynasty. Oh, oh no. That's oh, man. a big Dude. banana. Mate. What are you talking about, Matt? That That's some crispy lettuce. Oh, oh no, he's not yes. your dirty. All the way out long, BZ. Eyes on the corner. Super oh. as well. Oh, oh. oh. He's going to lose. He's going to oh, lose. He's yes. I didn't see it. I'm looking at it upside down like this. I couldn't see that ah, one. Hello and welcome back. It's ANZ Champs for yet another week. And this is going to be a big one. We've got four match days this week. Some might call it a super week, but to be honest, I think every week with ANZ Counter-Strike is a super week. So I'll just call it a big week. Um, I'm looking a bit short today, Jim. You look massive, bro. What have you been doing? You've been in the gym or something? Uh, that was a good no, point, by just the way. Been... I just want to point that out. Like, I know you love those. Oh, yeah. I'm an aficionado of the odd pun or two, but mm. what a super intro. Uh, mm. You had us on the edge of our seats the entire time, Jordan. Uh, I'm but I'm on the edge of my seat, obviously, because of my T-shirt. That's about it. Yeah, I've been loving your T-shirt. I've been watching that one as we've been getting ready. So um, I'm, I'm quite interested to see what kind of shenanigans our producer can, can, can cook up with the green screen Ooh. on your shirt. Maybe there is a, a world there, mm. Komodo, where they can find something interesting to do. Yeah, I'm just thinking you could put some glasses or something on Homer there, you know, spice it up in that regard, or maybe even put some flames behind him. This is fine. This is fine indeed. All right, well, guys, obviously we have had a couple of big weeks of ANZ Champs so far. We're starting to get a little bit deeper into that Swiss uh, format now. We've already, you know, we've seen all of our teams playing once. I think as a general rule, if we're thinking about the way that the results have played out thus far, uh, would you agree with this, Jim, that they seem to have more or less gone to expectations? I Look, I don't want to sort of toot my own horn too early, <laughs> but as far as my expectations are concerned, I've got every prediction right. So I guess I guess I am right in saying that they have gone to my expectations. But what, what do you guys yeah. think? Has there been too many upsets? Has there been anything interesting going on? I think, uh, obviously, the um, the game last week for me that actually was my bogey game for these predictions was the Kanga Kingsman game. Yeah. Reason being was Kanga actually had to forfeit the first map. So I'm actually going to you know, put my uh, prediction scores down to that because I feel as though that really just impacted on to, to Kanga's mentality for the rest of the match. That being said, though, you kind of got to get yourself back into things pretty quickly. You know, after such disappointment in a season like this where the Swiss uh, bracket plays out. But yeah, I, I'd agree and say things sort of played out to expectation. Some of those matches maybe were a bit of a coin toss. Uh, maybe 16, 20 Kings, eight ballers, they're quite closely matched. And that was quite an entertaining series, to be honest. Yeah, it did seem mm. like that uh, the 16, 20 Kings and the eight ballers one was the most divisive one, wasn't it, uh, Komodo? That was mm. where a yeah. lot of people tended to to drop off the 100% pick rate. I sort of wasn't too sure which way I wanted to go with that, to be honest. I actually, I think I might have at one point had 16, 20 Kings as my prediction. <laughs> Obviously, we did see it go the way of eight ballers. And... I don't know how much that really helped eight ballers, unfortunately for them. You know, they go one and zero. You think, fantastic, what a start to the season. And then you draw Renegades in round two of Swiss. So uh, just looking at the, the second round matches here, I think at least on the, the one and zero side of things, we've probably got a lot of, not foregone conclusion matches, but matches where you would definitely say there is a heavy favorite. Yeah, I think there's one that you could throw in there that might be a little bit more toward the 50-50 line, and that would be that Vertex versus DGG. I think DGG are really stepping into something a little bit more, uh, you know, mainstream of what we know from the players in that roster. And I guess you could kind of try and draw an argument for the Paradox over game, but it should still be going over towards Paradox in that regard. So those ones should be still relatively cut and dry. But, you know, you move into that 0-1 area and, and then things really do shake up. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. I think zero and one is definitely going to be uh, a pretty difficult one to predict across the board. Um, you know, a few teams that we didn't really have a great understanding about at the start of the season, Jim. We've gotten to see them for mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks playing, um, you know, not just here in ANZ Champs, but in some of the other competitions going around the place. Uh, you know, probably a few of these teams also played in that RMR qualifier as well. So that I think they've been getting a lot of games under their belt, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we know exactly what is going to happen. So I guess we'll see. We'll wait and see until we get into those matches. Obviously, that'll be coming up a little bit later. Today, we are focusing on the top side of the Swiss bracket or the Swiss format, I suppose you call it. Uh, we have Renegades and Eight Ballers, and then we have Kingsman and Order. Komodo seem to agree with me that these should be semi-one-sided games. What are your sort of takes on this? Are you maybe a bit of an eight ballers convert after watching them win that? Do you think there's a chance here for Kingsman, remembering that they are that X fury roster, which is, you know, not mm. a terrible roster, but going up against order, I mean, it's a tough ask for sure. It is a tall order for the Kingsman. Uh, they're going to need all the King's horses to get over the line for that one. But I just don't think it's, uh, you know, uh, I just don't think they're close matches today, unfortunately. I just think, you know, Order and Renegades, definitely Renegades, are going to be a touch above uh, their opposition. So, yeah, might be a fan of how well, eight ballers play. They play entertaining. But I just don't think individually on that level they match up to you know, their opposition. So, Renegades, it's safe to say, are uh, probably the out-and-out -out favorite here in ANZ Champs. And this is their chance to really cement that position here by just punching down on a few of these, uh, these other teams. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, uh, nothing really to note here for Renegades. Again, I guess Komodo, the most recent roster change being Liaz to come back into the ANZ scene. When we did get to watch them playing in their first game of ANZ Champs, that was up against Milk. They dropped a grand total of six rounds. So I'd have to say it's been pretty easy streets so far for Renegades since yeah. returning home. Yeah, I think uh, the thing to really cast your mind towards in these games for today, when we look at Renegades and I guess when we look at Order as well, those are the teams we're probably expecting to be in that 2-0 matchup to get the 3-0, to get them in toward the next part of this tournament. And, you know, coming in toward this one, Liaz, just bringing the firepower that these guys needed. It's a roster that, you know, even with the old previous lineup, it's still powerful. Leaz just makes it even more powerful. So it really is the test for these guys on, I, I guess you could say, you know, what is the round loss difference going to look like for them? How many maps or rounds rather are they going to be dropping in this map in well, the series? Yeah, I mean, let's touch on eight ballers as well, Jim, for, for a second here, because there has been a little bit more going on for this roster in recent times. Mm. Obviously, Mr. Sharp coming in for them did seem like a positive addition to the roster. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, you know, shaping up against Renegades, I would have to agree with what Komodo says here and that this is going to be a match where they really do need to just focus on trying to get as much done as possible rather than focusing on the out-and-out -out win. Yeah, and I think, you know, speaking to them after their match last week, Mr. Shark is that new addition for Jules Cheat. He's a permanent addition. And Jules Cheat has been there since the start of, you know, eight ballers. And he knows that side inside and out. Mr. Shark has had to come in and they've had to pretty much just try and... You know, like gift him that knowledge in such a short mm. period of time. And you can see that they're not quite uh, as cohesive as they'd like to be, but it, Mr. Shark is having that kind of impact that you want from a new player that just refreshes their, uh, at least their orping prospects as well. He was yeah. hitting some pretty crazy flicks and I'm, you know, safe to say that he's fit into the roster and performing quite nicely. But yeah, this is just another level for them. This is just a, a leap compared to maybe the steps that they're used to taking. Indeed, indeed. Well, I have a question for you guys. Um, when was the last time you actually went to the movies? Because I don't think I've been to the cinema in like two years almost. Yeah, I think the last thing I saw was like Bad Boys for Life. And that was at least <laughs> two years ago. So, I actually went and saw The Batman the other night. Oh, well, at least you've got um, a little bit of a, an edge on us. But for, for Jim and I, maybe this is something that's pretty good. Circles Life are giving us and you guys at home the chance to meet up and uh, watch Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness all over Oz. So they're, uh, you know, hosting a few exclusive screenings when the movie does open up in May. Um, it's obviously a good excuse to sort of get out of the house, something that we as uh, gamers do tend to struggle with sometimes. Uh, and obviously see some mates and, and go to the movies, which, like I said, is not something that I've done in a little while. So hit exclamation mark strange in the chat to enter if you are interested. And of course, you can potentially win yourself a screening so good luck and maybe we'll see you there i don't know jim uh, are you gonna enter oh you know you gotta have your uh, hat in the ring if you if you want to actually take the prize so of course you know it's been a while since i've actually been to the movies i mean 
Bad Boys for Life came out quite a while ago, so <laughs> I think any opportunity to, to get out of the house at this stage is a welcome one. Indeed, indeed. All right, guys. Uh, one more thing that we do need to you know get from you at home is the Dare fan vote. Who is going to walk away with the victory in this series? I would have to say, I think this is, again, going to be a relatively one-sided prediction. But remember, when it comes to the predictions, you should be trying to put this one in the correct slot because Twitch chat, you're actually doing pretty badly in the predictions, unfortunately. You are actually <laughs> the worst, apart from production. <laughs> well, you're equal to production. Production's also pretty bad, but they're kind of normal. Yeah. They're kind of normally pretty bad. So um, yeah, look, at this, more, at this point in time, you need to be working on things a little bit more. Um, I'm doing really fantastically. I'm doing really well. The rest of the lads <sighs> are also doing okay. Jim, are you really only on six? I, I honestly, I thought, I thought you were on seven. I think, have I been, I think you're getting yeah, Sam. Yeah. 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 You're getting I think scammed. I've been gypped there. There's no way. <laughs> Production's just trying to make them feel themselves feel a little bit better by having another person on six. Like, they're like, oh, well, yeah. like, we can't just be with Twitch chat. Like, Twitch chat's kind of cringe. So let's let's give Jim six points as well. No. They're trying it, to bring me right. down to their level and beat me with experience. That's. Anyway. Surely. We've all sure, gone yeah. the way of Renegades, haven't we? Like, that's that's yeah, going to be a given. Much, yeah. Production, I mean, they're trolling at this point. They're just using that as an excuse. Oh, we got some wrong, but now we're going to throw the predictions because, uh, yeah, we don't know anything anyway. So, they're not even that far behind. Good excuse. I like the pictures here as well. Um, I'm a big very fan animated. of mine, personally. I, I reckon that's like that's like me on the caster desk, you know? It's just like lips going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much an accurate description of, of Mac. Uh, and there's, is Pilski traveling right now? Is that why, like, he's... Yeah, he's in that, a plane. He's in a rocket. It looks like in a rocket, yeah. right? Yeah, he's an astronaut, yeah. Now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Komodo, you're the car guy. I mean, I guess that all makes sense. Makes right? sense. Yeah, um, makes sense. Let's talk Vito's here as well. That's going to be maybe not a massive factor in this series. Vertigo is the first pick, so that's an interesting little curveball in there from eight ballers. But it's not out of the map pool of Renegades, so I mm. don't think it's going to be a too difficult one. Do go over mm. on to uh, Ancient, courtesy of Renegades, which again it sort of is in line with the map pool that I've seen from eight ballers in the past. So I don't know how. Uh, disappointed they're going to be with those map picks but obviously you know when it comes to this i would probably be saying regardless of the map veto uh, a 2-0 today is what i'm expecting to see from renegades yeah no I I, yeah I, I definitely agree with that one and i think you gotta remember as well the performance that we've seen from the sort of we'll call fringe maps from renegades to get more practice here in able to bring them out you know hopefully when they do go international again will always be good mm -hmm. Um, so just being able to practice them, I guess, is really good. And I, I, sort of likewise, I draw a comparison towards Order, right? That was one of the maps that they dropped the other day uh, against Camo. So, you know, getting practice on these maps is important. Indeed it is. Well, it looks like we are getting ready to jump into map number one. Of course, it's Vertigo and it is eight ballers choice. So if they're going to do it anywhere, lads, it's going to have to be here. Let's find out how they go. Well, it's either going to be a tale of two outcomes, victory or defeat for either Renegades or 8-Ballers. But I don't know. This is feeling like a veto that looks very good for Renegades. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with you on that one there, Jim. It does look like for the 8-Ballers. However, Maui is playing. So subbing in for Prodigy, actually. Because we do get a little bit of a contest over towards a ramp. Renegades falling back a little bit. Bogeyman spotting out some information for now. And just this progression up the A ramp. They're just going to try and brawl their way into this A bomb site. Slight exchange of utility. Only just singes the hair on Bogeyman. So the smoke is going to signal their intent on this A bomb site. But Renegades have made the move over. I uh, like the cheeky boost coming up in here as well. However, all the CT starting to surround the site and they're going to look to deny Plank. everything. The plant at least does go down for the eight ballers, so you'll be happy enough with that one. But a couple of kills going both ways. Player advantage solidified over towards the Renegades. And now it's just Bogeyman for the one versus three. 24 HP and he's not going to get anything done, unfortunately. Oh, uh, well, I got the bomb plant at least. It was almost a foregone conclusion too. As soon as you saw Sicko on that quick flank, he was almost pretty much on the A ramp. As they were hitting that immediately site. yeah so that was going to be always a question of whether or not they had recognized that push coming through but no chances being taken here with this renegades bite straight into three m4s a famous and an mp9 so 
Eight ballers not quite leaning into it as heavily, but they've still purchased into this. Actually, sure, he's got that uh, a scout right up in there. Yeah. I'm just wondering, maybe that's a bit of an overcommitment. I mean, you're looking at the later rounds, they'll have the buy in the next. If Shui's just going to be down onto something likewise of a Galil or something in Mac 10, even try to play a little bit of that uh, extra cash, extra speed. Have to wait and see for that, of course. Slow and steady wins the race here for eight ballers. Seeing if they can work any of these picks. I like the way the Renegades are playing, though. They are quite turtled up. Not trying to give too much away. It's a fairly safe approach here from the B-bomb site players as well. He's just there just as that swing player. He's got responsibilities in mid, but, well, that's just going to be Shui going down quite quickly too without any armor. That's a, I don't know, that's a <laughs> big chunk down quite quickly by the M4. But yeah, we'll see. Confident. Uh, we'll see if Moe can do anything with it. But again, this round should just be pretty, pretty... Just a formality, right? You would never expect Renegades to be dropping around like this straight over to all the pistols. Maybe the scout gets a pick or two at worst case scenario. But for right now, all the information is there for the Renegades. They know there's the grouping of the eight ballers toward the forklift ramp position. And they're just going to look to keep them contained. Not let them have a chance. Not let Moe with the scout find anything. If you do wrap around over towards B, you run into Liaz. That's a bit of extra money on the MP9 as well. So, I mean, regardless, it should still be the round for Renegades. Well, the only real chance they've got to at least allow this flash that Moe CQ has to do anything is going to be this B-bomb site. So on the back of this flash is where they're going to try and make things happen. They've actually got the commitment here from Liaz, though. He is just mopping them up with the MP9. So this should be a pretty quick round, and it is. And April is... I don't know, that investment from Shui means that he's going to have to go quite light here. Yeah, we'll see what it's going to turn out to be towards. I mean, you've got the AKs already being purchased on through Shui. He's going to be down toward the Deagle, so it's not the greatest thing that you want to be going into your, quote, first gun round with. But we'll have to see. Maybe takes the AK away from one of his teammates. I kind of want to see, again, what eight ballers have for the startings of this map, what utility usage is going to be looking like, because we've seen problems from them in the past where it is that util dump scenario, and then they've got really nothing towards to play with. So... I, I really am just going to be interested in how they are going to be playing around specifically, you know, the A ramp position on this map. A Renegades going to look to build confidence early on. Looking to just try and fight for this, actually. Utility damage means that Moe has to back off. He's taking quite a chunk of damage. Again, just trying to take territory over towards B. So, eight ballers are just trying to see whether or not they can catch Renegades, maybe getting too confident. Aples will be very mindful of the fact that they have to make Renegades respect them. Ooh. They're ready for it. Yeah, that's a couple of beautiful openers from Bogeyman. Two-player advantage for the Aples. Those M4s will be able to be picked up by Shui as well, so you'll get a bit of an upgrade happening. But Alistair, is this little cheeky opposition expected? No, it's not. Good for one. Can look to fall back and maybe even go for a cheeky peek over the smoke. No one's going to be expecting this one from the Aples. But you look at that util usage now for Renegades, Jim. They've got Flash, Zendieri, Smoke... They at least have a kit. It's looking good. Shui's been able to get that upgrade too, so he's on the M4. Oh, Alistair though, he's ready flash. with that flash. Oh, that's poetry in motion. He only gets one though. So all eight ballers need to do is trade out here on this A site to secure the round. Yeah, well, Leas does have the incendiary as well. He's going to throw that to try and deny this, uh, the bomb from going down, but it is on the floor. He gets the burn, but Moe with the wow. frag onto Sicko does mean that it is all up to Leas. The one versus two has a smoke. He can find that kit, maybe even a cheeky ninja defuse to come on through, but the smoke gets laid on down. Now it is the hunt on to where the eight ballers members are. A secondary smoke as well, a little bit deeper this time to play on top of the site. Finds Moe, but the trade is there from Shui. And the eight ballers will get the round on the board. And they play that round quite nicely. Critical pick, too, from Moe. As they hit that site, that was the trade that they needed after losing one to the Molotov and the bomb. So, it's a good round from eight ballers. Again, all they had to do was be mindful of the fact that Renegades are going to play that no respect push. And Bogeyman was so ready for that. And Renegades, they do fall. But back onto pistols. So, just trying to keep that economy under control for that buy in the next round. Oh, I like the change of pace from the eight ballers, however. Straight in towards scaffolding, the A ramp control. See if any of the Renegades boys are gonna maybe overstep their welcome. Cheeky little boost up with the Deagle on top. See if they can get anything. 
player advantage. Flames, though, I like that from the eight ball as they're just making sure that they're maximizing this utility, clearing the corners where they possibly can make their interest in toward the site a little bit smoother. Trying to utilize every advantage possible. Oh, I oh, to go oh, for oh. that smoke block, too, so that could potentially be troublesome because there's a gap in that smoke. But they're not going to advance in time for that to be a problem. There's four members of the Renegades crew around this site as well. So it could get a little bit chaotic here for the eight ballers. They've got a couple of positions that they can force out with you know, your, uh, your molly. But as that does get thrown on through, Hats is here for one and one and done. A couple of kills still coming in toward it for the eight ballers. However, and look at the contest right now from the Renegades. The damage is being dealt with these pistols. Inns has spotted a little bit of damage toward him, but now he's stuck in toward the corner. Eight ballers need to get this bomb plant down onto the floor. But they will be vulnerable when they start to do so. They've only got two flashes, so it's not a question of whether or not the utility is there to help assist them. So, oh, has been engaged. They're going to move on the back of that. They're not aware of Mr. Shark's position, and they do manage to take that round, eight ballers. So, playing that one with smart cover, Moe there transitioning back into his playing role. I'm sure he's relishing the chance to take on Renegades. <laughs> yeah. Got the death fan vote <laughs> coming on through though. And that is a skew and a half if you've ever seen one. 97% over toward the Renegades. Right now it's it's two and two. It's 50-50. I mean, it's a better stat for the eight balls looking out towards it. Yeah, I think, you know, even just on percentage around wins versus expectation, that's, they're overperforming. <laughs> Well, it's good to see that they didn't drop to the pistols and a beautiful Ooh. opener from Moe, however. Reading into what that one, will he be expecting the second player to be here? No. Sicko, to find that. To note, Renegades do have the AWP in play as well. That'll be expected by the eight ballers, you would think at least. He's poised around the A ramp for now. They're just going to be have to, just going to have to be smart with that utility usage. They do have enough flashes to move Alistair out of comfortable positions, but Sicko, that's a great peek there on the back of the flash of ins. So, yeah. they're ready for Alistair though. Yeah, spamming him away. 16 HP, down to zero now. That's the York <laughs> down really without any weight in toward the round. I didn't even know if he got a shot off with it. I think maybe one. But uh, a bit unfortunate there. Three versus three. Bomb, of course, retrievable. You've got Hat still playing over to this side by himself. And I mean, we saw him Play around the sandbags in the pistol ramp. So again, just a neat little piece of utility. Try and flush him out. But the lurk. This could be big from Inns right now behind them. He won't be able to hear the footsteps yet, but you dare say eight balls won't expect to flank this quick on the bomb site. He's going quite quickly, but he's going to have to be because that B bomb site has been surrendered. Plant will come in. Renegades are just sitting on the haunches of the site, but Inns now. Makes his presence known. So this is where the two remaining eight ballers players oh. are going to be pushed and pulled. That is so close. Oh, the damage being delivered, however. Kobe still manages to find Sicko on top of the smoke. Both of them within an inch of their life. But look at Inns as well. He's down to 12 HP. He needs the quick shot on towards Bogeyman first and then maybe on towards Kobe, but they're playing passive. The util gets brought out. He's seen him. He knows where Bogey is. One shot will do it, but he needs that shot relatively soon. There's the kit, but the time has just ticked way too far. Oh. Bogeyman will close it. It's a third for eight ballers. The flank was a real, real threat in that situation, but they adapted quite well. It's on the back of Kobe being so low, but still managing to frag out anyway. Bogeyman as well. Just showing us his best dancing skills around those boxes. Manages to just keep Renegades kited for so long. Now, now they were going to be uh, floating around with the pistols once more. A couple of HE grenades they could potentially run in with a stack, but uh, it doesn't look like Hans wants any of that. Again, a round for the eight ballers that you would hopefully not see them drop. However, in you know, the round previously, Renegades bringing it within two with those pistols certainly does leave things open for opportunity for a bit of a sneaky round. Got a four player stack on towards this A site yet again for the Renegades and Inns. He's looking to start off the party. He'll find Shuey. That's how you start off a party with a Shuey. It's one way to <laughs> get straight into proceedings, but Mr. Shark now 
He's not going to be able to progress too much further than that Molotov, but oh, Renegades. The firing oh. squad has arrived. Oh, but they're going to be laid down like that. Leah's good for one, Sicko another, and this is what we're talking about. The damage that these pistols are able to bring on through for the Renegades. It's two players alive for the eight balls yet again. If Sicko finds one here, oh, he could even find the rounds. There's Ooh. the shot. He knows where Moe is. The head given an opportunity. He needs to settle down, but it's not going to happen. Moe will at least find it. Eight ballers, they will cling on. But these pistols, Jim, they're certainly making it entertaining. Oh, you knew that there was going to be a flashpoint in that very moment where five members of Renegades were sitting on that A-Ramp. And, well, eight ballers are ready for it. They do trade out in the end, but you could see the level of respect that eight balls are giving to Renegades. They're not taking any chances in these duels. They're not trying to do things individually either. They're mm. working together. They're pairing up and trying to work as that cohesive unit. This is what we liked when we saw them last week in uh, their match with Kings, or 16, 20 Ooh. Kings. But, geez, Inns is getting aggressive. He only goes one yeah. for one. So B's opened up here. It's only Liaz to try and hold it down. We know how potent he can be. There's one. Tucks in toward the generator. Looking for a second, but it's Kobe to get that. And now it's within one for the eight balls. The plant and then the hold. Mr. Shark with the AWP. We saw... Uh, well, we saw his impact with this gun in the previous series, so I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do here. Great position of the molly and the kills coming on through, and now it's Hats. He will be dispatching of Mr. Shark, but now, Kobe, where do you expect him to have relocated to? A couple of angles to clear. The smoke can go on toward the bomb. Flames up toward the deep line as well, but Kobe, he's wrapping around for a little bit of the height advantage over at the platform, and now uh, Hats is just going to look to stick this one. I don't think you'd be expecting it if you are, Kobe. Ten seconds, you're counting in your head. There's no kit sometimes it works wonders but it's not going to for hats here as kobe will deny that is a well worked round again for eight balls kobe has proven to be such an impactful player when it boils down to these 2vx situations and he's delivered once again that is a massive round for eight balls but this is where the loss bonus starts to come in for renegade starts to prop them up a little bit not for long but I'm sure if you're Renegades now, you're starting to get slightly frustrated. A lot of these rounds are coming down to those clutch situations. So, eight balls are performing above expectation in that regard. Mm. No, most definitely. We've got a bit of util coming on through, but Bogeyman, one and a half. Ins down to seven HP. We'll see what the containment is going to look like surrounding this bomb site right now. It's just a little bit of carnage happening as Moe will find the last frag in that little affair. Three versus three. So a little bit of util for the eight balls to settle down with and then re-attack toward the side if they want. Problem being for the Renegades, they've lost two of the members that had the M4s here, Jim. These Famous are still in play. Yep, and still, it's such a fast change of pace from eight balls, recognizing that there's not going to be the money there, the weaponry and head armor or utility. So the fast mm. play with the, the MAC-10 out fast is going to probe and it's also going to do damage. Bohemian that adjustment as well. This is the flash oh. of the ramp to clear things out. Alice looks good for two, but Kobe's going to have to step up big now. Yeah, four HP, a little bit of util, but his shoulder is sticking on through, and Sicko is going to find that one. Saw the flashbang hit Sicko right in the face, but at least Alistair was there to get a couple of those kills. And you talk about the loss bonus, Jim, coming over toward the Renegades. Well, the problem being now, with the rounds the eight balls have been finding, they haven't found them with a lot of players surviving, so now they're broke. Yeah, all they've been doing is reducing their lost bonus by winning so many in a row and they're at the stage where they've had their own money broken so they have been close rounds and they do come at a cost so you got the pistols so let's see if they do try and change pace here already feels like a bit of a slow around with the smoke at least blossoming at the bottom of the ramp Alistair with the AWP, but now the Stampede starts to come through from the eight balls and they're all waltzing past hats. He's going to try and deny them, but the flames get extinguished. And now a little bit more utility usage starting to come out. The rotations for the Renegades coming here as well. Lots of damage already being delivered to the eight ballers and they are not allowed entry. It's a great Molotov too, because it forces eight ballers to either back off or split and force to take a fight. So it does one of two things. Either splits the grouping up forces him into action and well Shui was left behind that's a ramp cleared and so now renegades can just shift their focus elsewhere liaz he's gonna get some help he needs to stay alive as sicko he's there he's the cavalry oh there's great flash oh but they can't capitalize upon it jim all of the damage coming on through and look at that alistair 
through the wall in the end. All five alive for the Renegades. They'll just go back in toward the utility. That was the force through for the eight ballers again. So uh, here toward the eco, you get the guns in the round afterwards. And then you're starting to see, all right, well, maybe one or two more rounds. And you're really happy with your performance on the T side. I think you got to remember as well, you are playing the Renegades, you know, whilst... Yeah. You, you can't be scared going into this game. It's always going to be kind of over your head that you are playing, you know, pretty much the best team in the region. Shui's just gone into this round as well, being stabbed in the back. That's not a great start. At least it's not a, at least it's not it's a, not a gun round. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, what it does is it just maybe potentially eats away at uh, confidence levels. But that being said, though, eight ballers have really... As we said, performed above expectation in a lot of these rounds. Also, too, they've had Moe coming in. Yeah. Having to step in for Prodigy. The benefit there is, though, at least in the coaching role, has a solid understanding of the role that each of his players play. So, in theory, he's able to fit into those roles because he helped oh. craft them. But that's sharp from Alistair. It's just a cleanup crew on aisle five. Yep. But now... Now we get to see who stabs Shui in the back uh, with the assist. There was Bogeyman, so he needs to tuck that blade away coming on forward. Tied up though, Jim. Five apiece. And now we get that gun round coming back from the eight balls. It is good to see though that uh, they're all laughter in the cams as well. It's definitely what you want coming in toward this one. But I think this is really where the test is going to come in toward eight balls, right? You've started off the game with a couple of rounds here. You're coming in toward the stretch where you need to be balancing out your money. You need to be capitalizing, gaining these rounds. You've got that AWP back out on Mr. Shark. It is glass cannon with no util. So it is that risky business factor again. If they find the opener with that one, however, looks like a little bit of speed again over toward the ramp but they're not allowed entry and maybe renegades will start to sweat a little bit yeah the issue in this round here is for eight balls they're just gonna have to move fast and decisively because they don't have a wealth of utility to work with two flashes two smokes that's it well let's settle down on the back of this utility and now look how much the eight balls do have as you mentioned it really nothing it's gonna come down to these jewels if they can find an isolated member of the Renegades. Maybe that's going to be their entry point in toward the round, but it's the massive grouping up around the A ramp. And look at that, Mr. Shark jumping up on the ledge, taken down relatively easily. The Flames doing a bit of tick damage. Shui good for one in return. He's even going to go for another bit of aggression. Looking for Hats. No, rather, it's Inns tucked in toward the sandbags. It was Hats to lose his life first. Flash on throat. Inns manages to find Moe, but the trade's coming through. 50 seconds. Do you stop here if you're the eight balls, or do you try to get in amongst the chaos Oh, oh, beautiful. Oh. Slightly telegraphed, though, with the shadow, but Alistair keeps it nice and clean from here on out for Renegades. Yeah, they, they were sort of put in a, a tough spot there, eight balls. Lack of utility meant that they had to move decisively, and they really weren't afforded the opportunity of fakes. So... Mm. Renegades were all over that. Once they were trapped on that A ramp, it was just a sequence of Renegades flash picking, flash picking, flash picking, wave after wave. Yeah, well, we really are seeing the economical woes for the eight bowlers. It's something that they didn't really have to uh, feel in their match the other day against uh, you know, 1620 Kings because they got so many rounds on the T side at the half. It was 11-4 uh, from memory. Um, throwing that one back and it was just so many rounds in a row that they always had those guns essentially in their hands But right now it does look like the pistols are still feeling a little bit of damage But you know nothing really to write home about just yet No, not yet These are the kind of rounds too That hats actually builds confidence off So I need to be careful that I don't activate him Mr. Shark is down. Hmm. Again, you know, it's just these rifles for, for Renegades. You don't really want to be dropping anything too much. Just Alistair will fall. Renegades will find the seventh. We'll finally get to see what eight ballers are going to come in with when they've got utility behind themselves again. The last purchase didn't really shine through with a lot of that utility. Liaz is looking so solid at B. Just in that anchor position. All he's doing is staying alive long enough for Sicko to work off of him. So that is making things difficult for April. They really haven't had a lot of success at B. Uh, 
Uh, well, they are looking to bully the boulder and Liaz back over toward the B site. Going to have that rotation from Inns already. And Sicko on that secondary AWP line. Something I haven't really touched upon just yet because, you know, it's gotten a kill here and there, but it hasn't really been the, the big eyes toward it. But now it might need to be. But the rotation and the hit starting to come over towards this at B site. Inns is going to be the one to look to lock it down as Liaz did lose his life. Got this player advantage for the Renegade still, however, and a bunch of utility they're throwing over. In's blinded, finds Kobe. Looking to line up for Shui as well, but he's not going to be allowed to do so. It does look like the settlement starting to happen. Smoke will go in, block some vision. Mr. Shark will be taken out by Alistair through the uh, wall, mind uh, you. And now it's Shui. A HG what? grenade to his feet. It's 25 HP, 24, 19, burning a little bit, and it's in close. Oh. <laughs> Funnily enough, as soon as I call out Liaz for being so solid at the B bomb site and just staying alive, he's the first to die. But he's the only <laughs> one to go down. So what he's done is bought enough time for the rotation to come through. Alistair has <laughs> dialed in himself in this matchup. Okay, that's a cheeky line. That's yeah, that's filthy. Absolutely dirty. But we do move into the 14th here. And again, it's kind of the similar story that we're, we're selling here, Jim. Eight ballers, pistols, little bit of utility. We'll see what they can flex upon in the round. Maybe again, they do find a little bit of that isolated pick, but it's something that they haven't really seen just yet in, in quite a while, right? It's the hurt with the money. As I make mention to it uh, against the 1620 Kings game, it was, you know, eight ballers finding strings of rounds time and time again. It was never a gun round a pistol, a gun round a pistol. And we haven't really seen too much of, of a shake up, too much of an impact with these pistols. Yeah, maybe that's what they need. To shake the magic eight ball a little bit harder. Get the response that they want. There we go. Oh, there we go. Kobe starts things off. And Liaz, well, he's going to leave Sicko alone at B. There is Inns there shadowing. But this is... And this, this, is this is the big. push and pull, right? This is the push and pull. You lose a player in Liaz. You go somewhere else. Try and get some info. Bogeyman, though. Decapitates in. The trade is there, but the bodies now for the eight ballers are starting to surround this B site. Sicko, he can find these jewels one after another, and it will not phase him whatsoever. Looks a little bit awkward, a little bit shaky, but again, you know, three versus three. The guns, you've seen the fallback now. 30 seconds. You get an idea that things might be rotating to the other side of the map. Renegades are in a bit of a washing machine right now. But Hats has got just presence here. The scaffolding. He's going to hear Mr. Shark too, so should be able to clean him up. And I should be able to keep it relatively locked out of the bomb site here, unless Shui oh, can Shui. find the opening. How do you get out of that one, Jim? Alistair, you saw him on the, uh, the screen, the shoulder. The flash is great, though, however, to bail him out. Sicko already here, however. We got the frag on towards Shui, and now it is just on to Kobe. Remember, this is pistols that the eight ballers have gone in with. They've gotten the plant again. It's one versus two. A tap on toward the bomb. Baits out where Kobe is playing from. He's reading into Sicko on top. Finds that one, looking for Alistair, but he's just off to the left side. The defuse will be coming on through or into the next round. Of course, no matter what, the money for Renegades is here. And by the tick, Kobe will keep the AK as well. That's a great round from April. It's despite the fact that they go down there, at least they were able to work the extremities of the map. I mean, the money situation for Renegades is looking great, so it's never really going to threaten them there. But for the first time in a while, they're actually looking dangerous in the round. Renegades have had to do a lot of work after some hard-hitting rounds from eight ballers mm. early on. They managed to wrestle themselves back into the advantage position here. But eight ballers can oh, finish no! this half nicely. That's not a good start, though. Yep, that's your teammate with the AWP. It's a bit of haste for the eight ballers. At least hats, uh, well, rather, the eight ballers, Moe, does find hats in the end. The intended target originally was Inns. Mind you, there is a three AWP setup for the Renegades right now as they are trying to chase double digits in this first half. Cheeky HE grenade as well on towards Shui in a forward line from Inns. He gets his head absolutely taken off. Bogeyman doesn't care about the HP that he has in him right now. Liaz. Prominent B-site player is looking for the aggression over towards A and he is gonna at least open up for a double oh. kill coming on through. And just like that, it's brought back and equalized. That is a great set of flashes just to activate Liaz here. That grenade might be a bell ringer and Money. it is. So Renegades have fought back into this. However, the readjustment from 8-Balls means the B-site is open. Kobe has gained power of position. So he'll be calling in Shui to get that bomb down. He's gotten ahead of him here, hasn't he? Cheeky line as well. He's going to be able to spot out Liaz. 5 HP. Might be able to find the frag through the bottom of this railing, but 
reposition yourself. Maybe you find the double kill with Sicko on the sticks on the AWP right now. Niaz is looking for it. The flash is going to be going on over. Is there even a flank happening from Alistair at the moment? Quite. Ooh, it was. For sure, you'll be finding that one. And now it's that one versus two. Everyone low in the server once again. The angles, the shot on through. Sicko's down and now for Liaz, but he's creeping on out. The right eye peak is better for the CTs in that regard. The fuse will be coming through here, Jim, as well, which means the halftime is going to be 10 to 5 in favor of the Renegades. Folks, don't go too far, because when we return, of course, we will have the second half just around the corner. Well, it was five rounds in a row for the eight ballers that saw them leading five to two against the Renegades. However, it was a nice accumulation of eight that did see us at a 10 to five halftime scoreline. Renegades dominating, leading to the T side now. We'll be bringing in Jordan, the Elfish Guy Maze to see if uh, eight ballers are going to be able to bring this one back. Yeah, I mean, I was positively surprised by what I got from 8-Ballers in those first few rounds of the half, but uh, we kind of got back to the expectation when Renegades really started to get rolling, and it seems like they have more or less continued that into the pistol rounds. Decent kill to start things off onto Moe, and then they get themselves into the B-Bomb site. Plant down 5 on 4 post-plant, and 8-Ballers are well and truly locked out of that site for the moment. Gonna try and go for the retake. Hats has crept his way underneath jump up, but has been spotted still. Not gonna matter. Kobe and Bogeyman to try to clutch it out two on five. And well, I'm not sure that that's gonna happen. Bogeyman with the one on four. It's a little bit too much to deal with. 11 5 with the scoreline here. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I thought it was pretty decent stuff from, from eight ballers, but then Renegades just decided to be Renegades again. Pretty much. So what can you do? 
Well, apparently, uh, nothing for now would seem for the eight ballers. Absolutely steamrolled by the quick pace of Renegades in that pistol round. So they're going to try and answer back with a purchase of their own. And I keep kind of drawing this one back right now to the eight ballers is what are we going to see from them that's different? And that's the sort of copy and paste when they're back on toward these pistols outside of the rifles. Because it has been, you know, for, for lack of a better sense, pretty readable as far as Renegades are concerned. Yeah, that may be true. We have those pistols out here for eight ballers, so we will get a bit of an insight as to what they're thinking maybe on the CT side. Unfortunately, they don't have too many rounds to play with, so they're kind of going to need to start to bring it out ASAP if they've got anything in the back pocket. Remembering this is their map pick, so yeah. this will have to be the one where they do sort of try to get the ball rolling a little bit, but obviously very difficult against a team that is of such quality as Renegades. Hmm. And yeah, just well composed at the moment as well. Not going to be walking into any sort of stack. You've got hats over in mid. A little bit of a how do you do peek up as well. But starting to move in toward the B site. Hats will start off by finding Shui. Moe absolutely taken out by Liaz. And again, it is just looking like these formalities. Dotting your eyes, crossing your T's for Renegade. Ooh, that could have just happened there. A little bit awkward, but it's okay. Yeah, Hats has figured it out. A uh, nice couple of shots go through the backside from Bogeyman, but inevitably, again, just the one gun lost in the round for Renegades. So, so far, only two deaths in the half. Renegades are definitely progressing through this one nicely. 12-5 scoreline. And he's not quite there yet for the CT side, so we might be seeing this just build up a little bit further as well. Hmm. I wonder when we do get the guns in the next round for the eight ballers, are they going to start to look to cut some corners, get a little bit more unexpected? Because, I mean, Renegades, they're really just getting the good grasp on this one. I do like the setup, though, over towards mid right now. The flash in will try and take out Sicko, though. It's not going to be blinding him whatsoever. Uh, it's going to be the team flash. Oh, well, nice couple of shots again through from Bogeyman, but luckily for Renegades, at the very oh. least, Liaz is there. Ensuring that the gun cannot be retrieved. Though no harm done. Three rounds in. Three kills so far for eight ballers. They're going to be hoping for a little bit more in their first gun round of the half. Yeah, it's not even really a weaker state for the Renegades as well with those Galils, those AKs that they'd already invested in toward too. So they got all that utility. It just looks like a, a pretty clean shakeup of a rifle round. You don't have that weaker effect over on the Renegades side. So leading in towards eight balls, are we going to get that aggression that we've seen from Mr. Shark? He loves to take the first peek with the AWP, though right now he is looking like he wants to set up his teammates. A little bit of a peek from Bogeyman. It's only some damage for now. Yeah, talking of damage, there's a lot being done by Shui. A double kill, and Bogeyman swings in for the trade. So, first gun round, looking much better for eight ballers. Renegade's now on the back foot. Obviously, they've got enough money to buy through next round again here, Renegade. So, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but they'd love to get a little bit more damage out of this one. Eight ballers are, you know, sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to their money. And that will change very quickly if the round goes comfortably their way here. But they go and Liaz, two obviously very, very talented players. And Ooh. make a bit of a difference. Yeah, a bit of damage on through, trying to see if they can find Moe. But it's Kobe and Moe to find the final frags. And the eight ballers will finally get another round on the board. It is good to see that they retain... A lot of these guns as well, as you mentioned, Renegade's probably coming in with another purchase here. I'd be interested to see if Alistair does choose to get that AWP in toward the play on this T side right now. He's going to elect to do so as well. And we get a little bit of a spawn peek from him. Mr. Shark, likewise, could be said to in that regard. But this, I mean, again, you know, you're looking at the eight balls, how many rounds they need to start to draw in a row. You've then got Lost Bonus coming over towards Renegades. You've got that experience where they'll feel the pressure. Eh, maybe not as much as you would come to expect against, you know, maybe another team like Order and such. But I want to try and gather this one quite cleanly. Well, Alistair is having a little bit of a peek over that smoke. I thought he might have a suspicion there was a player there. I could see him coming, but maybe he didn't. And you sort of mentioned a couple of rounds ago, Mr. Shark likes to get a little bit involved mm. in the early stages of the rounds with the AWP. There is a good example of it with the push into mid, finding the opening kill. Renegades have a little bit of work to do here now. 
It's been interesting. Mr. Shark, of course, the player that was very explosive for eight ballers in their previous series. But right now, he's just being really punished. Hasn't been able to really get anything happening. That was the fourth kill to come on through with that AWP just there. So maybe it is the start of something new. Maybe it is the CT side awakening for him. We got the 50 second mark approaching now for the Renegades starting to creep on. Oh, maybe back towards the B side at the moment. You do see that that's where Moe and Kobe currently are lurking about. Not too much utility usage for the eight ballers either. So if it does come in toward a retake, no smokes to block off some vision. Just these incendiaries, the flashes as well. Boogeyman's got great control of ramp, and as a result, eight ballers are able to send an extra player over to B, but Kobe is going to get shut down by Liaz. Great news is, though, Moe has not yet been spotted, so he waits, bides his time, looks to strike, and almost lines up three. But one is the only frag that he can manage. Five seconds. Still, time definitely a factor for Renegades, and they're running out of it. Inns, he does his best. But there is no time left in the round, and the CT side will walk away with a victory, albeit... A bit of a streaky one. Hmm. Beaten by the buzzer. Yeah, we'll still take that if you are the eight ballers. But for Renegades, that was the the money pretty much put in toward that round. So unless they force in towards this AWP that Inns is retained, it's going to be the little eco for them. And then the proper weaponry in the next round definitely is the time for the eight ballers. Start to get a little bit of a grasp on this CT side. We've seen the aggression. Renegades will know that they can get a little bit of a challenge before they are met with that. But right now, it's the utility for the eight ballers going on down toward the A ramp. They know that there's that potential rush to come through from the pistols. So just slowing it down trying to keep some control of their own. And if that was a double HE grenade stack, that would have done a world of damage over towards mm. the Renegades boys, but another smoke. It's just keeping them contained for now. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good rap control so far. Nice flick from Mr. Shark. But eight bullets have definitely controlled this side of the map. Their util usage over here has been very good. They've really been putting Renegades down a peg or two at the start of the round with the, the nades and we see that's uh, seeming to pay off quite nicely for them. Alistair has got an AWP in his hands here. So Renegades, they do want to try to get something done, but Hoagie Man, uh, he does stand tall with a couple of kills, even though Renegades have found some of their own. Obviously still looking quite good here for eight ballers, but now that Alistair's getting himself on the line in toward the A bomb site, Sicko also being tossed an AWP. Start to wonder if maybe there is a clutch on offer. Well, it certainly would be a spectacle if they're able to. The two versus three, low in HP, no armor as well. You're looking towards the denial factor with the incendiaries, that HE grenade that Moe does have, albeit he is on the other side of the map. So he's going to start to get his rotation happening. And you're still looking for that bomb plant if you are the Renegades. It's coming down to the wire again. Got to be careful of the timer. Got to be careful of even dying after the timer if you're looking toward it. But the plant is going to be going down. Let's see how they fare with these orbs. Well, Alice is going to need to hit some shots. Or oh, maybe it's going to be Sicko. Has put Ali into the one on two, which is definitely very winnable from this position. But without armor, I believe it'll be a little bit of a struggle for him. He needs some quick flicks from Ali, and he needs to find that timing perfectly. There was an opportunity, but doesn't connect. Now starts to see Kobe Ooh. creeping on the left. Deals with him. Moe in the one on one, but Alistair has a smoke to hide in, and time is now a factor. Oh, he's got a defuse kit, but I think Alistair might have won this. Oh, he's even hit it there's again. There's no time. No, nah, there's no time whatsoever. A valiant effort from the eight ballers, but the retained AWP and the pistols, they do prevail. Ali even surviving after the timer as well, and you've got to be laughing if you are the Renegades to take away that one. They are indeed laughing. And for the eight ballers, yeah, a bit of a costly mistake in the end of that one. Yeah, very, very costly. I mean, this is the kind of round that you absolutely cannot afford to be losing against Renegades. Oh. Not to say that 8-Ballers was really making a significant run into winning this map, but, you know, if they were going to, it was going to be, you know, required to win rounds like yeah. that. And then some some of those kinds of rounds of their own, do you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. they were put into an awkward sort of economic position... They would have needed to win those kinds of rounds. And this is this is maybe it, right? You need to see Moe kind of having a big round here with that M4. But past that, there isn't a whole lot of weaponry for eight ballers to work with. And, and even if they do manage to get this one over the Lion Komodo, I mean, uh, there's still a lot of time to play with for Renegades. And yeah. 
So it's going to be a real, real grind for eight ballers. It definitely needs to be into the, the position, you know, that Renegades, if they get OT, I mean, you, you start to consider, all righty, eight ballers really bringing it back. But I almost feel like it has to be done in regulation at the moment. More gun rounds that we know Renegades are going to be able to play with. And I mean, if we're seeing eight ballers lose to, to the pistols here, it does make things a bit more problematic for them. You touched upon the fact that Moe needs to have a pretty significant round. Well, he did start off with one. And then Bogeyman as well, being able to find one. But hello, cheeky boost. Chase your own medicine. Uh, actually not looking too bad now for eight ballers. They haven't been able to retrieve any guns bar the one AK onto Kobe though. So if Moe and Kobe do drop pretty quickly here, maybe then Liaz and Alistair can pull off a, another clutch. Bomb plant is being Ooh. attempted, but in the meanwhile, Alistair has gone down. Let's see if Liaz has a little bit of that magic he used to back in the day. A one on four, a tough ask now that he's tagged down to 33 HP. Double peak from eight ballers is going to make it impossible. And they will stave off the map point. Yeah, nice round from Bogeyman to get it out with the, the, the Deagle in the end there, actually. And Moe with two as well. Uh, through the top of the smoke, I always do fancy that little boost as well. Sometimes, you know, in the span of the moment when there is a little bit of the, the time factor for Renegades, the pressure building with the player disadvantage as well, you're not tending to expect a player on top of there. And it's, I mean, even more difficult from the fact that you can only really see a tip of their noggin on top of the smoke. So a brilliant round for the eight ballers to at least be able to pick up here. They're going to be seeing Renegades with the pistols uh, when they do see them on their screens, of course. So again, you know, we bring it back to the time for the eight ballers. I wonder what the target is for them against Renegades in this series. Because, you know, the expectation from them will be, you know, maybe we're not going to be able to take this one over the line. Is there a number that they want to get? Is there just a single map that they want to be able to try and win? Well, you would have to say if they wanted to get a map, it was going to be Vertigo. But they're not doing a half bad job of it. You know, like this is obviously still Renegades game to lose. But they're definitely making Renegades work for it, which is not something that can be said for a lot of teams in the ANZ region. A lot of the time, you're seeing Renegades walk in, you know, half paying attention and 16 fiving teams. Mm. But now they're, I feel like, actually being made to work a little bit for it. Obviously, Renegades do go to 15 there, which is a little disappointing for eight ballers. But there has been some good rounds here from eight ballers, yeah. and that's the takeaway for me. Yeah, just to, to make mention as well, that was the pistols once more from the Renegades straight into what eight ballers face. So it does put them on to, you know, a little bit of a problem once more. It's not all bad coming into this new round with the M4s, with the AWP and that MP9, but you got seven map points that you got to try to contest with. You got Ancient around the corner, which is a very scary prospect as well. And I mean, eight ballers aren't a team that shies away from that map. Uh, but we know that Renegades as well, you know, picking into it here, feeling that they maybe have more stuff to work on to fine tune in a series such as this one. Early engagements, however, do see the same boost for the eight ballers, trying to solidify some information over to water and the timing from Ian's, he might have a double here. Yeah, I think he might. He sees the foot. Uh, wait, he, sees he, it. He, took, <laughs> he took a little bit of time to see it, but he did get it in the end there. And so once he recognizes what's going on, as you say, easy double kill for Inns. And that probably translates now into an easy round for Renegade. So well drilled that that carpet of fire just gets thrown in to cancel the rotates of oh, eight ballers. Liaz, that was a nasty flick. And for poor old Kobe now in a one on five, not a huge amount of hope. Yeah, Hats is looking at him already. And the shot's coming on through. Maybe finds it. No, it doesn't. 16 to 8 is the scoreline on map number one in our opening series of the night over towards Renegades. They take it in towards the Subvertigo here. So Ancient will be around the corner. But of course, for now, we are going to throw it over toward that cheeky little break. And we will be back soon. Hey, look, menu bomb. Terrorists win. Sit on your Sit on you were down. <laughs> He's too busy fist bumping the coach. <laughs> no, that's another AK for the CTs to play with. I don't know if it's going to be. That actually gives Smooth Crew full youth.
Well, a decent map win on the board already for Renegades. 16 to 8, though, you have to say there was some moments in there for eight ballers, and they did look good in a couple of rounds. But ultimately, up against the strength of the Renegades roster, there are few teams that are going to be able to do much more than that against that team. So, I don't know, Jim. I mean, obviously, you just took a break. Uh, you know, you, you took some time off in the, the second half there. What did you think mm -hmm. about the, the end scoreline? Like, I mean, were you expecting maybe a closer game, a more one-sided game? It did seem like it took a little while for Renegades to get going, but once they did, it was business as usual. Yeah, eight ballers were actually looking good. The main mission at the start there was just to simply make Renegades respect them a little bit, and they did a good job of that. Then, once Renegades started to realize that, they started to shift into what was maybe more a natural game for Renegades. And from there on, it just... I guess the task only increased in difficulty for eight ballers and it just didn't really feel as though they had too many more ways in. There were a lot of clutch rounds early on too, which really did help sway momentum in favor of eight ballers. But that being said though, you know, once uh, Renegade started to I guess, be activated a little bit more in their match, things became increasingly difficult. And yeah, I, I guess it went the way we eventually thought it was. And you know, Alistair really did look dialed in, but- oh, uh, That's a mouse by the way, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. Don't know if he knows what that's for. But anyway, um, what were your thoughts, Komodo? Was it, uh, you know, again, like like we said, sort of business as usual. Kind of nice to see Liaz getting uh, higher up the scoreboard this yeah. time. Plus 13 for him on that map, 25 and 12. So not a bad shout to be dropping 25 in, what was that, 24 rounds? So yeah, yeah pretty, pretty damn solid. Look, I, I think you hit it on the nail. You hit the nail on the head earlier when you said this is definitely Renegade's like series even to lose in the end of it. I think Eight Ballers gave that one a real ripe pot, a real uh, a real good you know crack at it if we're if we're looking at it right here. But in in terms of getting it over the line and what we want to see from Eight Ballers, the fact that they were able to to get ahead in the very beginning of the series and then it kind of just you know fell real flat. It didn't go anywhere from there. It was you know one or two rounds after the the half. Mm. There's a lot that they need to, you know, work upon uh, after that. But I think that's what they know coming into this series as well. This series is going to showcase them, if if not any other, what they need to be really dialing in and working on. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything negative to say about eight ballers, to be honest. The only thing that I would have liked to have seen more from them maybe was a little bit more uh, on the anti-ecos. Right? I don't mm. think you can be affording mm. to drop anti-ecos. I know, you know, this is such an easy thing to say and such a difficult thing against a team like Renegades, but... Hey, if you want to win this series, you cannot be dropping anti-ecos. Not even one, unfortunately. Um, let us know, by the way, who you think is going to win the next map here. 
Uh, it was a 97 to 3 split on the first map there, favoring Renegades. So I wonder if we can go one better and maybe get a 98 2 here, or if there has been some faith restored in the 8 ballers roster after that one. For a few of our viewers, uh, it is looking like this probably should be a 2 0, though. Ancient is coming up next. That is the map choice of Renegades. And while 8 ballers have looked decent, it is obvious, Jim, that Renegades is just a cut above. And in my opinion, that's kind of good to see. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think at the end of the day, when we're watching Renegades, when they're playing against teams in A and Z, we kind of want to be seeing them brush them aside pretty comfortably because arguably this team is our best hope when it comes to international success. Obviously, LFO is overseas right now. Uh, they did not manage to, to get themselves a series victory in, in Pro League. I believe that they played their Tough last group. one this morning. It was yeah. a tough group, but they did take a map off of Fnatic, if I remember correctly. And yep. they certainly seem to be doing a lot from the, the branding side of things as well. So that's good. But yeah, I, I just want to you know say, reiterate, I think that it is good that Renegades is able to sort of quite handedly deal with the ANZ teams. Absolutely. I mean, as I said, you know, I joke about it and the fact that they're punching down on these teams. But in all honesty, these teams are going to learn a lot from this. And I think April is one of those teams that actually will benefit Worlds from playing Renegades. Even though they're playing in with Moe, Moe's going to take that back and just, you know, he's going to run the data and try and bring his team up to standards. But I'm looking forward to this one, Jordan. I think it's safe to say that, you know, this is going to be a cracking match for Renegades and Aipos. If they can get some rounds on the board here, I think they've done themselves a world of service. Indeed, indeed. And I kind of agree, and I like the point that you bring up there about eight ballers getting a lot out of a series like this. Um, from At least from what it looks like outside, it seems like eight ballers is one of those teams that really does have uh, a good system around them. So they're probably going to be one of those teams that will be able to take a look back at these demos and be able to learn a lot from them. Some other teams maybe, you know, don't scrim as hard, don't practice as hard, don't have the coaching system, whatever. Um, and, and they might just go, all right, well, that's a game that's not really worth looking at because we got we got owned by Renegades. Like, what are you going to learn from that? But I think eight ball is maybe a different story. It is Renegades starting off on the T side here and already Liaz continues where he left off on the first map. Alistar searching for a USP and will get backed up by Hats, who keeps him alive. Very quickly, that is the B-bomb site cracked open. Just a pain train, wasn't it? There was a good you know, piece of utility that came through. Took a few you know, HPs off uh, Harry Potter's, as Mac would put them, off yep. Renegades. But they really, they'd already run past that utility. They were already in the site. Well, we've got Harry Potter in a couple of different varieties on this Renegades roster. I think that was something Ooh. everyone was excited about. Still oh, have Moe in the train. server. Mm. <laughs> Just one big Congo line of Renegades heading towards Moe. There's not really a lot they could do in that round. It was just a fast grouped approach from Renegades. Glocks in close quarters, doing damage. Eight ballers played very default in that round just on the sites. So going into some five sevens and some desert eagles with that scout on Shui. It's not a bite miss by this time. So it looks to be a little bit more deliberate than maybe we thought in the first map. Hmm. But are they going to be able to deal with this renegades push towards B long? There's nobody really home. Not, uh, not apart from Bogeyman, and he's he's uh, he's doing his best not to answer the door. No, <laughs> he's uh, locked in the closet right now. Yeah, he knows when uh, when the door to door salesman turns up. The best thing to do is just pretend you're not at home. No hawkers. It's not a conversation you really want to get into. <laughs> Sorry, Mister. My parents aren't home. Mm. Well, unfortunately, he has been spotted by Inns, and so he'll lose his life. And things are continuing on quite nicely for Renegades. They're not really too troubled in this round. There wasn't really too much damage utility either at the disposal of eight ballers. And, you know, they are going to come through and try and take this scout off Moe. So it's really important for eight balls to hold on to their investments. Ooh, nice shot from Moe. It is, it is kind of fun to see Moe back in the server after so long. I don't remember the last uh, official that he played. It would be a while ago. Look on uh, HLTV and see. 
And it probably was a fill in. Do you, do, you, do you want to take a guess? Yeah. I'm when gonna it, go with might have been. four months. Four months? Oh, you'd actually yeah. be pretty pretty close. Third of November last year, he played against Alpi, and they won two and one. There you go. Against Mr. Shah. Uh yeah, probably was. Indeed, it was. Mr. Shark actually top fragged for his team there, and Kobe top fragged for eight ballers. Nice solid entry into the A bomb site here from Renegades. It is just against the pistols, though, so nothing really to touch on. Good spray control in the end. Keeps hats alive. Liaz helps him out a little bit there. Siko was one HP, too. But all's well that ends well for Renegades. Three and zero off the back of the pistol. It's exactly what you want to be seeing. They do the deed. They keep it relatively clean. I think that's that's all that was on the agenda for Renegades. Just try and keep things clean. Not fall over to Ecos, but coming into a more important round now. Mr. Shark on that orb. And let's just see whether or not he's going to be able to have an impact here. Starting utility from Renegades is actually quite solid. I do, however, get into B laneway. Well, Leaz has taken a heap of damage in doing so. But they have control and Shui. Almost takes just as much, if not more. So early exchanges of utility are looking promising, but the territory battle, at least for Renegades, sets them up nicely early on. A little bit of a change of pace this time from Renegades, not just rampaging into the A or the B bomb site. Looking to take some mid control first. Smoke down at the top of mid, but Kobe with a bit of a cheeky angle, does manage to catch that push forward from Inns. Now it'll be on to Alistair to look for the trade. And while he already knows there's a player Ooh. in Donut, he wasn't prepared for Mr. Shark at top mid. So, Renegades starting to get picked to pieces by eight bullers in the first gun round. Which poked and prodded. To be fair, has been kind of the prevailing sentiment, right? First gun round has been pretty good for eight bullers. We saw in that first... Uh, Gun round of the second half on Vertigo when 8 Ballers was on CT side as well. They were able to, you know, just find a couple of opening picks here and there and put Renegades on the back foot. So I, I don't necessarily think this is a world where Renegades is like just running through 8 Ballers. I think it is a bit of a case where 8 Ballers have some good setups. They are catching Renegades here and there. But once Renegades kind of sees what they've been doing, adapts a little bit to that, is a bit more prepared for it, that's when... Obviously, Renegades comes through with their experience and is able to win the rounds. But at least in the early stages of the half, eight ballers is able to get away with it a little bit more. And uh, they definitely have to take that opportunity and run with it. And they've done so in this round. Renegades will just give it over to them. Three guns remaining. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go with like a you know, a car metaphor here, you've probably got you know, eight ballers. They're the four-speed auto right now. Probably looking more like the five-speed manual. Okay, so like a solid gearbox. But then you've got Renegades, who are like this 18-gear truck. And they've just got so many gears to go through. So when things stop working for them, they have at least a few more gears that they can go through, things that they can try, things that they can do. And eventually they'll find the right gear. Whereas eight ballers just don't have that many gears. So if things aren't working for them, it's not going to be too good. Especially if they don't have the right oh. amount of torque. But oh. ins, that is... Oh, that's a handy frag to pick up through the smoke. And he's even going to... Whoa, I thought well, he's even gonna die to Yeah, he's gonna die. He's gonna lose. I thought his he head. was gonna. Thought he was gonna bop Shui with that grenade. It just goes a little bit too deep. It looks like Liaz is gonna be the one that gets bopped by a nade, but he luckily keeps himself tucked in the corner and will avoid the shots from Kobe. It's still a numbers advantage here for Renegades, but health well, it might actually be swinging the other way now. Liaz and Alistair are a stone's throw away from death. Yeah. The, the longer this round goes too, the harder it would be for eight ballers because they've just got to, they've got to make a read, right? They've got so many now holes to plug that they're going to leave themselves short somewhere. And you can see they're making the readjustments now. They're, they've actually given up control of the A bomb site and are going to go back towards more of a mid B focus because realistically, that's all they can hold without being pulled apart. Mm. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out too kindly for them because Renegades are just taking this slow walk into A. Not even using any util, it's more of a contact play than anything else. Giving a bit of time here for Liaz to get into mid to cut off the rotates before they start to throw the grenades. And now it's looking fantastic for the T side. That should be the nail in the coffin for the round. 
And I'd say the eight ballers lads that remain, Mr. Shark and Shui, will well and truly recognize that. It already looks like they're opting to save, although the bomb plan has not occurred. When it gets really, you know, ensuring that they they get all that util down, mm -hmm. cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure that there is no possibility that they lose that round. I guess they didn't have 100% information as to where Mr. Shark and Chewie could have been, so maybe they assumed there could have potentially still been someone in Donut. Smoke went down before the bomb got planted, and that's good to see from Renegades. Those little things that sometimes can cost you rounds. It wouldn't have in this case. The thing about Ancient, too, is one of those, it's one of those maps where there is actually always a counter hiding spot to a, a hiding spot. So if you're, if you're just walking through as a team... You actually have to expose yourself to another hiding spot to clear one angle. So it's really difficult to get through some of these rounds, but they managed to do it because there was no one there. So they have to take their time in doing these sorts of things. But uh, funnily enough, eight ballers, they had to gamble there. They couldn't hold that after losing those two frags. They really couldn't hold the, the majority of this map. So they had to just cut their losses, only hold one of the bomb site, and then maybe just, you know, play the percentages. Is it going to be a B site hit? If it is, we're prepared for it. If it's A, well, we're just going to save. Oh, Ogie Man tries to take matters into his own hands and gets aggressive down the B ramp. Hiding behind the smoke, he's not gotten back into B. You know, he hasn't rested on his laurels. He's going to try and look for more. Shui gets the info that Hats is still hanging around, but it is quite important that Hats doesn't drop here. He's the man that has to collect that bomb and has to work his way back over to A to rejoin Sicko. So he did manage to get Bogeyman in the meanwhile, but can't catch Kobe. And eight ballers now might be in with a chance of winning a gun round on this CT side. It's these little information plays that are really you know, on the back of the aggression out of Bogeyman. The information plays has, has been what's won eight ballers this round. So... Just taking some initiative on that CT side. It's not going to work forever, but it's going to be good to start things off for them. And maybe Siko can do some damage here. Every gun he takes out of Apola's hands is gold, but they've got no means of trying to contest here. Apola's, so they're just happy to let Siko try and run this bomb. Hmm, that's a pretty good round win for Apola's. Just uh, a little change of pace for them. And that is able to catch Renegades off guard over towards B. Gets a bit shambolic over on the A side of the map as well. With that said, though, Renegades have, of course, got enough money to buy back into this round. So the job's not yet done for eight ballers. They've gone for the double AWP, though, Jim. A lot of an investment in this round from eight ballers. Need to win it. Funnily enough, I feel like it's one of those strategies too that they really you know, will run it best with Maui being a former Opa. So let's just see how this pans out for them. Pushed out from Renegades. They have control of this B laneway and that's going to be where they're going to set up a layer of utility on this B bomb site. They're going to push on in. That's finding that uh, double entry is going to be great news for Renegades. Doesn't really need to look for too much more. The smokes are definitely... Doing a lot of work right now. Chewie might be the point of difference here for eight ballers. Kobe also able to open one up. So, I'm just starting to dwindle a little bit here for eight ballers with that kill. That's getting a lot of work done with only the eight HP. And of course, Inns wrapping around the back is more or less going to win the round for Renegades if it wasn't already won. That's the worst possible news for eight ballers because they've just won a round. Money loss bonus has kind of reset a tad, and unfortunately, now they don't have enough money to buy into this round. It's round two where Aples will be just feeling like they're entangled in this web of renegades. They've been able to, you know, just bust on into this B bomb site. They sent Inns as this splinter cell worker, and it's essentially just suffocated anything Aples have tried to do. They've been hit with pace, and then they've been hit with like a slower push from in. It just, it just doesn't feel like, you know, you're in that game at that stage. But Renegades, just with that Molotov, just trying to segregate out any aggressors. Oh, this spam is doing a lot of damage too. But Renegades are just going to take things nice and slow, keep things as clean as they can. 
as Inns does get that peek in towards the B-bomb site, but he's just the decoy. They're the decoy for what's going on today. Yeah, that's the big news, I guess, for Renegades, is that they have managed to walk their way into A without too much trouble. No bomb plant is going down. That information has been commed over to Hats and Inns, and they now know that they no longer need to do anything toward B. So pretty routine round in the end. Does look like 8-Ballers is going to go on a little bit of a hunt here, so Inns may need to call for Hats to turn around and give him a bit of a hand. In the end, it was actually Hats that dropped first, but Bogeyman is not getting out of this one alive, certainly not with a gun. No. The rest of the <laughs> Renegades lads have decided to hot foot it all the way over to the B bomb side and catch him down as well. Six to two, the scoreline. Just another one in the back pocket for Renegades. I actually thought he got a bit of a bink on, but not to be. This is the round that, I guess, another big roll of the dice with investment, Jordan. This is the double orc round coming out again for A4s. And we know when this doesn't work out, this just leaves teams in the lurch for quite a few rounds afterwards because just that investment that's never really truly covered by that loss bonus. But the pace change here from Renegades might actually catch out A4s as they exchange layers of utility. Good start for Mr. Shark. Need to see a little bit more of that. But on the same token, if Mr. Shark's going to find an opening, we cannot afford or another player on that CT side to go down. Bogeyman, he's going to try and get aggressive again, but Renegades have seen this once or twice, and now the flash is going to come through. Alistair was prepared for it, but I think he kind of got caught by the flash of hats a little bit, and it ends up having to be Seiko to salvage the situation. Yeah, Seiko's going to have to throw his own smokes and flashes here in towards B, and the deep rotation is coming through from Ian, so... Eight balls are somewhat ready for this, but they're locked out of the site right now with those two smokes. Oh, unfortunate for Kobe. Taking all of that spam damage. Smoke is going to keep Sicko safe while he plants. If his elbow was maybe peeking around the pillar. Ooh. And Inns is looking pretty crisp and clean on this map, isn't he? 11 and 4. He's had a few multi-kill rounds. Nice shot there from Moe in an attempt to hang on to the AWP. I wonder if Renegades expects him this close. Oh, they, they double peaked they So they were expecting something. Yeah. Well, he's not able to hold on to the AWP anyway, so that's the uh, that's the main thing. It could have been. Okay. Not, not so one-sided. Yeah. Looks like April was one of few fans with their... Vertigo performance, but as soon as you see that happen, you know that there's a boost there. Renegade's just more advanced in mid, knowing that there's less likelihood of utility coming through from A4s. Inns is just going to get some oh, uh -huh. stats padded there. He's on a bit. They oh, know where the uh... one is. Yeah, that's a round that's disappeared quite quickly for eight ballers. Haven't had too much time to chat about it. Renegades is pretty ruthless at the moment, aren't they, as well? As soon as there's one individual left on eight ballers, you've just got three or four guys absolutely being sent at him. Yep. Four kills in that round, four ins. Talking about stat padding, up to 16. So, 10 rounds in, he is having a pretty big impact. Alice has got one kill. Ali has one kill and ins has 16. He's going to have to That's phone crazy. in a few kills. That's what he's going to have Phone a friend. Ins, may I please have the scraps? May I please have a kill or two? I don't know. One kill from Ali. It's not exactly going to be, you know, up to his standard to play. But there's only so many kills to go around. That's right. So, tack time out here has to be from eight ballers. Should he plays in the kitchen? It certainly does. I know Mac used to have uh, his PC set up in his kitchen in his old place. I always wondered how that works yeah. when someone's cooking and you're trying to play. 
Is he... <laughs> It's bad enough when you've got a fan in your microphone, let alone yeah. like a f something sizzling or that flying in the background. fan would be even worse. <laughs> it's the sizzle from the sausages or something like that in the pan that could get you, but Moe right now is finding himself in in the pan. Maybe mm -hmm. he needs a bit of a smoke extraction right now because he's just sitting on the back of that smoke in the cubby. He's going to wait for leave. It is Kobe who is overwatching him in mid. It'd be a jewel that I'd be a little bit afraid to take as Kobe if I knew it was in on the other side. Moe a little isolated in mid. He's going to cop the flash through there from Shui though and actually does catch Liaz. We are seeing a little bit being put together here and there by eight ballers, but it's just not nearly as consistent as what it is from Renegades. And Renegades are so decisive in taking map oh. control as well that as soon as you give them a bit of an opening, they have basically run through half the map. Yeah. Which is exactly what Siko's done. He's all the way up into Temple, basically. And meanwhile, Shui's still figuring out what's happening in mid. Inevitably, slowly, but surely, Renegades, uh, once again, get a handhold on the round. And Bogeyman is tasked with the clutch. Nice shot onto Siko's head. But uh, makes a bit too much noise, and Alistair finds a freebie. Now, what happened in mid? Because I'm pretty sure Inns has found the trade frag onto Moe but has then gone on to spray transfer, do a crap load of damage to Mr. Shark in mid, who has then been bowled out by Alistair with a grenade. So all in all, that's a frustrating round to cop if you're the CT. You're sitting behind a smoke, you've copped a heap of damage, and you're just trying to help your teammate. You end up seeing nobody and losing it all. This time it looks like a mid control attempt is on offer from eight ballers. Double nade. Actually, he's going to finish off Alistair. It might have been more than one grenade. I didn't quite catch it, but I don't know that it's going to have a huge impact on the round. It seems like Renegades... Oh, I thought okay. Renegades had it on lockdown, but apparently Moe is here to play. Hats has spotted him. Sure, he won't get out of here alive, but it is still a one-on-one. -on -one. And Moe with a deagle, we've already seen, can do the damage. So Hats yeah. has to be a little careful here. Reposition coming from Moe too. That Molotov at the start of the round just locks eight balls in for that fight. They, they can't take Donut quickly through mid, but... Oh, Moe! He's got the angle on hats! The reposition works. And that is a well-worked round in the end. Coach Moe coming through. Showing the youngsters how it's done. Kind of needed a bit of something like that for eight ballers to get them back into this map. 9-3 is still not a fantastic scoreline, but it is a position they can build off of. Get some guns back in their hands if they can get the next three rounds. Make it 9-6. That's going to be a respectable enough half against a team like Renegades. But I have a feeling Renegades aren't going to be too pleased to allow that to happen. And they, of course, have a buy of their own. No aggression coming out from a full forward mid this time, so... Just allowing Renegades that free reign of being laneway, that's just this such a great staging area for them. There is the contest coming through from Cheetah though. So it's just chewing up an amount of utility from both of these two teams. However, I mean the longer this round goes, the harder it gets for eight balls here just based on utility. So they have to hold on to their utility here now for the, the late round. Pretty passive setup from Renegades. Just waiting to see if they're going to get any aggression through from eight ballers, which is not a bad decision to make. There has been a fair bit of it in this half. Mm -hmm. But also a little reserve from eight ballers in this round, and now the onus turns back onto the Renegades roster. And see Seiko has progressed quite far toward the A-bomb site, so this might be the uh, staging area for the attack. Meanwhile, you've got... Inns and Liaz working their way in through mid. Cover of smoke keeping them safe from Donut at the moment. Are we behind the box? Has a lot of work to do here. Can he double down or even just find one? Maybe that'll be enough. Hats hasn't heard the com. He turns around, but a little bit too late to save Alistair. And now it's a one on three. Don't really yeah. blame Hats there, though, to be honest. He, he kind of had to look into Donut as well and see what was happening because he knew there was a player there as well. 
can't can't look in two directions at once. Yeah. Nice round for eight ballers. You just got to have faith that your teammates got that line. That's purely all yeah, it exactly, is. Exactly. Exactly. But you're right. I mean, Renegades did all the right things early on. They pushed, I guess, eight ballers out of laneway in mid control, masked a lot of information. But eight ballers, that A setup was ready. It was actually looking quite good. So the trades were quite solid. Moe just playing that off angle at the back box, showing himself at the right time. And now we're just coming in that early layering of utility. Not really going out as hard this time, but Inch is just working off the back of that. He's just going to try and get into this site on his lonesome. There's three players here from eight ballers, and this has fallen apart. Unless Alistair can make this work with the UMP, and it's not 2016 anymore, so I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. Hasn't really been Alistair's map either, so one on three. Look, it might get him fired up for the second half if he does manage to pull this one off, but with Kobe behind him, not too many chances of that. Nice little late half resurgence here from eight ballers, and this is kind of what I'm talking about in this matchup. You know, it's it's still not enough to say eight ballers is in a dominant position or anything like that, but at the very least, they're not rolling over and dying, like what a lot of teams might do against Renegades after going down nine and two. Bringing it back a little bit, and they may be even threatening for a nine six now. Yeah, I mean, Renegades are probably just going to laugh this one off because they are frustrating rounds to lose. They are actually frustrating rounds for them to lose. And if they actually get frustrated by them, they lose even more. But, oh, oh, oh hats! Signature one tap into that A-bomb site will open things up. So as soon as things start to look grim for Renegades, the pendulum swings. Hmm. Should be double digits from here on out for Renegades, which was very much going to be the goal to begin with. And they might have even thought they could get a little more than that. But 10 rounds on the T side of Ancient is certainly not too shabby. To be fair though, 8 Balls okay. is having a pretty good crack at this one. And now you've got three Renegades players locked in onto the bomb site. Good kill onto Kobe. Siko doing it himself against Bogeyman. And what was potential has very quickly slipped away. 10 5, the scoreline. Renegades, you'd think, have gotten enough done in that first half, but we will find out when we come back for the second.
Ten five to score line. If you're only just joining us, Renegades have the run of play up against eight balls here on Ancient. This is the second map, second half. Joining me is Komodo now. Dion, you've been watching from the sidelines. Renegades are looking far more clinical here, and yes. eight balls have been just struggling. But they have got rounds. Yeah, no, they've got, certainly got a couple of rounds in here. But I mean, I kind of look at them and then how much is it really to ride home about? But it looks like I have to put a Parker in it for right now because ins with the Doolies is actually only going to be good for one. But Hat's peeking out from Cheetah as well. Ball has got to try and get that bomb back in toward the site before at least going for the plant. Some info as Leas does meet with that smoke grenade. But again, you know, you've got to mention they need to try and get this plant down. The damage though they're looking for, Mr. Shark does eventually get the trade. And now Shui as well, he needs to win this duel. He's somehow going to be able to get away, but re-tackling against Hats, he loses it. The pistol round goes over towards Renegades. Now, I'll throw it back to him just quickly why what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I don't know if it was really much to write home about with the rounds that 8-Ball has got. It was one of those save rounds where they forced Renegades to save. And pretty much every other round they got bar one, uh, Moe had multi-frag with those Deagles or with the M4. So it kind of has been Moe, I wouldn't say carrying them with the rounds at the moment, but he certainly had the impact. And I, I really wonder, does it have to be Moe leading everything for this team? That is a very good question. Almost led them straight into that Molotov. <laughs> but Inns is just getting aggressive on the back of it. They're hunting for frags here. This is just total disrespect. Now, Moe's down to 50. Inns is playing close. Are they going to feed him? This question that you've posed here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, does he need any more kills, though? 22, looking for 23. Extra money with the Mag 7. You'll love a bit of uh, yummy change. At least the Glock of Bogeyman's good for one here, but that's probably it. No, I like Ooh. He manages to find okay. another one, so... Also, there's another round over toward the Renegades. We get guns now for eight ballers. And I don't know. I feel like this might be, if they lose this one, is, is there going to be another big hope? Yeah, this is this is the question. That is certainly on my list. A lot of questions. How? Oh, so many questions. But the one that really is just, you know, burning for me is that are eight balls going to be able to fight their way back from a big deficit in a match against Renegades? Mm. That's the question. Particularly also with a stand-in as well. Even though that stand-in is their top performer and he's their coach. So, it, you know, as we said, like fitting into this roster, he's going to have a solid understanding of the role that he's mm. fitting into. I uh, will I will say though, Moe, after how many years that he's been playing this beast known as Counter-Strike, still putting up some decent numbers. He's always been able to perform quite well, given how, you know, comparably, how many little hours he can put in. The battle is raging on. Renegades are just holding on to their utility. There's not a lot left for eight ballers, though. So, they have to just fight their way through. That's a good start. Mr. Shark finding ins. Moe able to creep on forward as well. Can potentially catch a rotate. Uh, from an A to a B player, as that's where it does look like eight balls are wanting to clear on through. Bit of a deep flashbang. It's not going to reveal any shots out from the eight ballers. No one close enough to hear a step either. A couple of shots now. It does look like Hats is ready to reveal himself. He's good for one. He's just going to look to fall on back. We would hate to see this round fall to the time for eight ballers, but it does look like some cheeky little U2 usage from Leaz as he finds one. Now, here's the thing. Moe. They've all just walked past him, oh, but he's only going to be able to, what, maybe find one here? No one else is there. They're going to have to rotate. Yeah, he's got the info, but he's got the control of this side of the map. So they're going to have to pursue through B laneway and mid or try and double up, find Moe, fight him, and then wrestle back control. So most split positioning is largely in favor of eight balls right now. That's smoke. Ooh, so difficult. They all have to kill through it It's if they want to retake. Yeah, it's the time that Moe's just bought for them. Uh, however, it does look like Sicko finding Shui is going to be go time for Renegades. They can't waste too much time trying to clear these angles. They have to steer their ship in toward the site. That is the objective. And Moe, he's holding close toward that bomb right now. Looking for the line of sight, though. This is Shark misses a shot. Gets a little bit of damage to his body. Moe has been taken out. There's the frag. They got to get on the bomb and they got to stick it. The protection. Hats is on the defuse. Lee has to try and hold it. And will. So it does mean the Renegades are going to be finding that round. Though, yes, they will get the AWP as well just at the end. That had everything for Renegades, but it did take some losses in winning that round. 
Should be relatively easy to cover given that they know eight ballers are going to come in here. And they're going to probably going to force that issue. Mm. And that's what Renegades will be thinking. They're starting to run out of rounds. They get a buy round in here early. They'll probably get another gun round in if they lose it at the match point sort of mark. There's really no utility with eight ballers right now. Two smokes, two flashes. You could try and get out a hit on toward the B site with those deeper smokes, but it looks like they're going to use them to just try and gain a little bit of map control. And at the same time, that's exactly what Renegades are doing right now. Hats just having a Belzer over at this lane way. He finds three. Ooh. Leia's on a bogeyman, and now it's just down to Moe. Nowhere near the action. Inns will find him, and it's a big, quick cleanup for the Renegades. Nice and easy, too. Didn't really have to expend too much from that. And this is, as I said, for eight ballers, it's just a question of, okay, this round probably going to buy in lightly with pistols. Fight in from match point onward. But as I raised earlier, are they going to be capable capable of getting themselves back from a large deficit and fighting their way and grinding round through round to try and take this into overtime against an opponent like Renegades? Mm. I just think that's a bit beyond them right now. To be past uh, a lot of teams, I think, at this point in time. One map down, 14-5. Uh, You're looking at 15-5 as well. You can't make a single mistake. Uh, I think one of the, I guess you'll call the bonuses for eight balls is at least this is that 1-0 area as well. You know, it's not like they're eliminated here. Cheeky little wall bank from Hats. We've seen him utilize this uh, yeah. paper thin wall time and time again. Usually with the, what, the MP9, but now it's with the M4. It's disgusting. It's just such an Oh, open I love that. Spam. I love that. Ah. The bait reload. Kobe drawn in. Absolutely love to see it. <laughs> that is playing with your food. That is the definition of playing with your food. Yeah. I'll say lock them out for the moment. Yeah, he hasn't really had to do too much this map uh, in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, Inns and Hats really getting a lot of those kills. Liaz as well. So... Pretty, pretty smooth, to be honest. Don't think Moe, as good as he's been in this map, is going to be able to fashion him in this round. But this is fairly aggressive setup from Renegades. They've obviously got you know, hats in a forward position at mid. They've got patrol at B laneway. So the info early coming in too, if they want to go back towards B. So they're going to get past Liaz right now. And he's going to walk into his cross out. Yep. Yeah, they're not going to be able to, unfortunately. One, two, easy as you like it again. 15 has been achieved for the Renegades. You got map point. You got 10 of them. Now it does bring into the decision for those, uh, that, that you were saying, eight ballers, how much do they have to still throw at us for this map? Apparently, Mr. Shark is trying to throw the book as he's brought in uh, the auto sniper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe call it the kitchen sink as well, you know. It's the, we used to call it the elephant gun. The elephant gun. Yeah. Have you, you seen the original Jumanji? Believe Van it Cup? or not, I okay. haven't. I haven't okay. watched any of that series before. It's like the, the rifle Van Pelt has. It's for hunting oh. elephants. Oh. oh, oh. Well, that's a good start. That's what you want. That's even better. Kirby on Elias, first bogeyman on to Alistair. But now it's Hats peeking up as well, and they're not even aware. They're not even looking at him. He's gotten away with two, and now it's the player advantage for the eight ballers. I've seen Bogeyman push up a little bit through toward mid. It does look like Inns is aware of that at the moment as he's starting to clear it, and it's going to be the pincer as well. Sicko starting to move on through the donut, but not even needed. This is a glimmer of hope here now for eight ballers. Sicko is going to have to try and separate these two. There is some utility, but it's not any sort of delaying utility on Kobe. does have a kit, though, so if he can isolate these two jewels, oh. I'll be able to give them a glimmer of hope. There's the first. But now where do you expect Kobe to be? He's tucked away, he's hidden in the line of sight. He'll be able to see the wires on this bomb. Surely there's no defuse. There you go. Okay, so they hang on for another round. It's only one gun transitioning into the next round. It's not even that auto sniper, which, I mean, Mr. Shark probably wants back, even though it didn't really get anything happening. <laughs> it's... It's not as expensive as the CT, I don't think. 
It's been a while since I actually bought. Oh yeah, is it is it not still five five k? Yeah, I think the CT one is a little bit more expensive than that though. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a though. it's a rare weapon that you hardly ever see, but uh, maybe we're hardly oh, going to no. be seeing eight balls oh, in this no. round as well, unfortunately. Is it's the mid crunch? And the Renegades have made a meal out of it. Kobe and Shui to see what they're going to be able to do to bring some sort of life back into this round. I mean, Inns is on one single point of HP. You wouldn't even expect Liaz in this little cheeky position. He's seen Shui. There he goes. And Kobe as well. They do have it. 16 to 6 in favor of the Renegades. They will clean up eight followers in the 2 to 0 fashion. I'll look to throw it to a cheeky little break once more. And when we return, maybe we get to have a little bit of a chat with a couple of these boys. Hey, look, menu pong. Expect some antics after this one as the defuse is on. And he's got plenty of time to think about exactly what he wants to do as well. Because he's not even the one defusing. There it is. <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes it just... Good stuff today from Renegades as they do end up sweeping aside eight ballers 16 to 6 on their own map choice of Ancient, which of course gives them the 2 and 0 victory today. I don't think it was particularly difficult for Renegades at all, but there was some moments of success for eight ballers. There's 
some positives to take away from this series against Renegades. Look, it's always going to be difficult. You know, you, you go 1-0 and zero in your uh, initial Swiss stage and you think, fantastic, we're off to a good start in ANZ Champs. And unfortunately, one team has to draw Renegades. And today, that was Apolis. So what can they really do about it? Probably not a whole lot uh, in the end there, lads. But um, hopefully they can sort of take some something away from that game. I'm sure they will be able to. Jim, we were talking about that at the start of the the second map with, you know, the, all that that system around them, the the coaching stuff and whatnot. And hopefully that's going to be something they can take a look back and say, well, look, here's where we may have been able to find another one or two rounds. And inevitably, those little things can go a long way in the long term. Absolutely. And I think for those guys, you know, unfortunately, they didn't get to play with their full roster. They didn't get Prodigy into the mix as well. And having to integrate a new player in Mr. Sharp makes things even more difficult. Could have been a really valuable experience for them had they had him there. But alas, it wasn't to be. And at least Moe was in there, who's a player uh, formerly and now their coach, who will be able to take that data away for them and they'll be able to just work on that. But you could just see that Renegades are quite easily a cut above them. Renegades didn't really have to go through too many of those gears mm. I was talking about and really didn't look too bothered. All right, well, let's jump into the interview. We know... Uh you guys always love to hear from the players. So we've got Inns and Liaz, I believe, ready to go for a chat. So congrats again, guys, for uh, another solid dub. Obviously, not the most difficult game for you guys uh, in in the grand scheme of things. But uh, I did just want to ask you, Inns, uh, you know, you guys haven't really been up to much, I don't think. You haven't been playing too much Counter-Strike, at least officials. So what have you actually been doing? Is it just basically a lot of scrims and stuff like that? Um, yeah, mostly the scrims and theory stuff. We try not to scrim too much in Oz, but we had the RMR, which we um, mm. played, I don't even know when that was, two weekends ago or something. And uh, now we're just chilling until we're off to Europe in a couple of months or a couple of weeks for boot camp. Wait. My one's for Jay. Now, Jay, what's it uh, like being back in Oz? <laughs> yes. Again, man, oh, so it, good, uh, man. Some fucking challenging games happening so far. Um, you know, cracking hard. That sort of stuff. <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, I got a, I got a fun one to ask you, boys. All right, just out of this one. What map in the current pool would you replace, and what with? Ah, uh, fuck overpass off. Get bring back like old cobble. I think. Yeah. Overpass is the worst map in the pool, bro. It's so bad. I reckon overpass or dust. Get rid of one of those two and bring in something like cobble, maybe Haven mm -hmm. or something. Haven, yeah, Haven's yeah, a good one. I like Valorant a lot, so bring one of those maps in. <laughs> <laughs> Seems you guys are not too split in that one. Oh, for, maybe that's, a, maybe that's, that's a too team. hard, bro. Bro, I haven't played Overpass in like four years. Like, none of my teams play it. Fair enough. Right. Cool. Fair enough, fair enough indeed. All right, guys, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time, and we do have another game to jump into pretty soon, so uh, we might leave it there. Thank you very much, and uh, of course, you know, one more round in the Swiss stages. I, I do imagine we'll be talking to you a little bit later on, so uh, have a good night, and best of luck in the rest of the champs. No worries, Cheers. guys. Have a good one. See you, later. All right, well, all, all said and done, I think we've pretty much figured out that Overpass is the map that does need I'm to be I'm very sad by that. I don't know if I agree with that, you know. Um, Jim... You're looking good, mate. Thanks, mate. I was I was just, you know, having some sizing issues like Mac was earlier. Oh, Mac's <laughs> got some serious sizing issues. Have you seen that guy's shirts? Like, half of them don't fit anymore. Glad we're on that wavelength. Uh, um, yeah, look, I, I personally would get rid of Mirage. That map's so boring yep, to watch sometimes. Um, or Inferno. At least Overpass is a bit fun to watch because we don't get to see it all that often. Um, look, I tell you what, though, guys. We do have potential... For some overpass, potential for some mirage to come up in our next series. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. We've got Order and Kingsman, obviously that being the X Fury roster, and uh, I've heard that there is a little bit of something, something going on in that Order roster. So I'm going to leave you guys with that as we do head into the break. Don't go too far away. We have an interesting game ahead of us, and perhaps we'll be seeing some old faces as well as we head into our second series for the night. <laughs> 